Welcome to the Be About It podcast. My name is Ben Mercedes and I'll be your host. We'll cover financial and crypto markets, real estate and entrepreneurship. My goal is to inspire others to be about it and take action. In episode six, I sit down with Terrell Weeks and we discuss Scoop Trip, the sneaker industry, sneaker bots for reselling, $10,000, Nike Dior Ones, and more. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Bro, thanks so much for joining me on the podcast. Uh, why don't you tell everybody you know, who you are and what you do? Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me, man. Sure. I really appreciate you calling me. My name's Terrell Weeks. I'm actually the purchaser for Scoop Drip which is actually a new sneaker clothing store, boutique, consignment shop in Worcester, Massachusetts, located at 140 Millbury Street. How did that come about? How do you guys get there? Like, I, you know, I obviously saw the posts leading up to the opening, the sneak peeks, the sneakers. I'm like, what are these guys up to? What's the move? And uh, tell me about that. For the most part, you know, it's um, it was a long time coming. It wasn't something, you know, just we thought up up overnight yeah you know we've been collectors i've um i've always been into sneakers and fashion so over time you know just acquiring a lot of things you start seeing the certain demand start coming about and you're like okay you start following trends you start paying attention to things and you start to see well okay there's there's some profit to be made mm -hmm. absolutely and, you know and um, i'm a type of guy you know I'm not going to wear everything, especially right. if I'm, you know, I have other activities in life that I have to partake in. So a lot of my shoes and a lot of memorabilia, a lot of fashion stuff just sits there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of like what they say, you know, with the f trends and old things that happen, um, history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So something that, you know, might not be in style right now, uh, come back in time mm -hmm. and you started seeing the big demand for that and people were just asking and we happened to have it and be sitting on it so it was like okay yeah. let's let's see what we can do with this yeah i've seen a lot of people just i mean all right so i took my son to savers we bought some cheetah print nikes for 12 dollars. worst comes to worst they were my wife's size right so you got some dope nikes right for super cheap and it's a gift from your son so you gotta rock them right uh at best we flip them on ebay for 30 dollars it cost him $12. I used check a flip to see what those have sold for in the past between 30 and 40. And it took a few weeks, but they sold and he doubled his money in one move going to the store. You see, and now at a young age, he's learning Absolutely. that, you know, you buy something for low. Absolutely. You see the high demand. Yeah, man. You sell it for high. Yeah, man. Let's talk about, uh, obviously you're in the sneaker industry. What sneakers are most profitable? Um, would have been some of the best moves so far, I guess, for the business. Well, like you said, um, with history, it's 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 a lot of it to do with trends. Um, yeah. This is a real big this is a real big community. Yeah. Um, you can kind of say it kind of expanded overnight, but there's been real players in the game for a while. Yeah. Um, since people were back buying Chuck Taylors and stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So you see it you see it with the reinvention of certain things um it really all depends on the style like i said a regular chuck taylor now we can go to the store probably get for like 13 25 bucks in between there but had it been a virgil abloh chuck mm -hmm. taylor mm -hmm. you know that's gonna run us probably about 250 175 Crazy. upwards about yep. so i want to say you know it's um it's more so the items that have um some type of following behind it or some type of cosign yep. um with that being said you know it's the creators so yeezys happen to be the number one selling shoe right now Word. um why is that it's more so you know i want to say it's the person behind this behind the creator um mm -hmm. if kanye wasn't such a genius at what he does and just such a, an intriguing figure people wouldn't really follow the demand i don't believe mm -hmm. um the second behind that shoe is the jordan one right. you know it's the iconic shoe jordans are always gonna sell mm -hmm. the jordan one silhouette 
happens to be the number one happens to sell for the most because they don't really get retro as much as the other ones mm -hmm. but when they do sometimes you happen to get classic ones that only dropped in say what 1985 36 years ago so those two are the probably the most predominant profit making shoes yeah but then you have collaborations that um really raised the um the item price travis scott sixes etc travis scott once travis scott just even came into the picture he already yeah. had all his raging fans from what it is mm -hmm. so now that we're giving them itemized material to take with it mm -hmm. it was a wrap yeah travis scott's or uh, i hit a pair myself um the retail price was 180 i want to mm -hmm. say <laughs> you resell I that resell that for twelve hundred dollars yeah bro. sixfold yeah i had a friend who had a pair of dunks he got them restored he put them on StockX, and they sold for nine thousand dollars you know what he did with that money he added a pool to his airbnb house in the dominican republic Let's see turned a pair of sneakers into a pool you know what i mean um i guess what have what have been the craziest flips you've seen outside of like outside of your personal flip, I know the Dior ones came out, and they were how much at? Were they a thousand? Um, the retail? Dior, the Dior low ones. I want to in say, the highs. Yeah, I want to say the low ones were maybe I say the retail was maybe about um two thousand MSRP. Gotcha. And um, I've seen them on floating on StockX for ten grand. It's nine grand. Easy, easy. It's for insane. For a pair of shoes, it's insane. And now, are people wearing those or do they just keep them in their closet? Well, you have you have some people, you know, um, outside of celebrities, we have. Well, outside, outside of celebrities, you yeah. know, we have some people who have assets to funds that mm. some of us really don't have access to mm. um, by whatever means they get to it. So to them, it's kind of a stunt. It's a show off yeah. by them wearing it. It's look what I got. Look what I was mm. capable of getting acquiring. my hands on acquiring mm -hmm. and now i'm wearing it for you to see um but there are also a lot of sellers who you know they it's it's legit some people trade a lot of people it, it all depends and i'm not really gonna say that it all depends on really your um where you are in life and your path of life sure so perfectly like we can say you know we'll have somebody who is in the real estate makes a quick flip they made seventy five thousand. What's two thousand dollars for mm -hmm. a pair of shoes that they're gonna kick around in because yeah. their loafers probably cost more than that. Yeah. So it's more so you know I um I personally haven't seen anybody I know wearing them. Mm -hmm. Um. Other uh, other uh, high end shoes, yeah. The Travis, I mean the Dior's, no, because it was um it was a hard item to get your hands. Yeah, on. yeah. What, what was the? Do you know how many were released? I'm Small not sure. Amount. I know it was a definitely. It was a limited number. I think it was like a thousand um, pairs or less. It was and, something and, stupid. And then I believe it was only in the U.S. as well. So yeah. now you got to think about it. it's only going to be in these Dior full line retail stores. Mm -hmm. So the people who were lucky enough to get their hands on them, yeah, man, like 10X. There's, yeah, there's people still sitting. Ten X, yeah, man. We uh, I was talking with a friend just about sneaker bots, um, and how to you know use something like that to acquire X amount of pairs at release. I know. Uh, Nike and other others uh, finish line, they're all trying to battle, right? The algorithm and the IP addresses to figure out who are the bots and to shut them off because bots are basically people who are buying 50 pairs of sneakers at release with one credit card and, uh, and then they just resell at, you know, 50%, 100% markup, um, which is crazy. It's, it's crazy. I, I, growing up, we would line up at Sneakerama and other spots to get sneakers what is the deal with the Nike app? I got friends who <laughs> literally they're, they're, what is it, the runner's app? Like they're, yeah. it's, 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 you basically never win. Um, and like, even if you press the button at nine fifty nine fifty nine, oh yeah, you, you still press it too late. No. So that's, that's one of the, that's probably been one of the biggest things with society now. Um, you know, um, Technolo technology advances yeah and so so doesn't society and so you know a lot of regular things that we're used to are going to change so before i can remember going into a Foot Locker and um shoes that are usually sold out now just still sitting on the shelves available mm -hmm. for you to purchase at any given time you mm -hmm. didn't need a raffle ticket you could buy you could purchase as many as you wanted at that time mm -hmm. 
now with everything it's coming in limited stocks or it's limited availability yeah. or they pick and choose how they this is more so how they combat the bots yeah. how they select the individuals who are able to make these purchases so you might have a sneaker that releases it might be only first come first serve the first week so you can only go in store to that location to purchase the item and then the following week it'll be online but it'll be online for a raffle reservation gotcha so with this way these are ways for them to try and stop the bots or try mm -hmm. to stop the mass purchasing but in all reality we can, we kind of have to ask ourselves is it fair yeah because they're they'll say oh people who are using bots that's not fair mm -hmm. but before an individual can walk into the store anytime buy they want buy as many pairs as they, they want in real life but now that yeah. people know that they could buy a pair and then sell it for a profit mm -hmm. we have to limit them one per that. purchase right and so i feel like that's kind of that's kind of putting a governor on the system mm -hmm. as well yeah so it's it's weird the way it is i personally like i'm not a big fan of the bots because mm -hmm. yeah i miss out on shoes too but also too it's now it's like these new these new apps that are trying to you know combat these systems are they really blocking legitimate purchases now mm -hmm. because like you said you know friends who go on sneakers app devotedly every morning on time credit card already saved Ready face go. scan yeah and they take the l yeah every time no matter what and they have the funds ready to buy them ready to buy it and that's the thing you have we i have a card on my <laughs> file ready mm -hmm. to go there's no limit mm -hmm. master p bro mm -hmm. and i can't win mm -hmm. so it, it is what it is today be a perfect example um yeah. 11 years ago the south beach lebron eight drop mm. i i w was able to walk into the store and purchase like a pair so I sat on them for eight months later, sold them for a thousand dollars. There you go. This morning, you know, thanks to Nike, mm -hmm. the whole world has an opportunity to purchase the shoe. So yeah. you have a one hour entry. So now after you enter, you have to wait one hour for just for the email response to let you know that you lost. You know what I mean? So I um I'm not gonna say that I have the best of luck with the app. Yeah. My um my purchase history is a little bit better than others, mm -hmm. um, but I take L's too. I take yeah, L's yeah. with the best of us. Um, the days when we have like shock drops and then they load up all the, the dunks, mm -hmm. I'm taking nine L's that day. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Mm -hmm. Like we mm -hmm. all kind of share the same pain. So like with this community, it's growing. But like you said too, with the bots and the apps and everybody trying to like more so it's everybody trying to get a profit off of it mm -hmm. so like who's really winning are the legitimate sneakerheads really even being able to be sneakerheads anymore mm -hmm. or like or do they have to get into it for the business now mm -hmm. just to secure pairs what about the other uh, nike executive whose son was uh she, he swiped her credit card for how much money 100 100 bands or something something and he crazy was getting an employee discount nuts so it's, he's buying um, six figures worth of sneakers through essentially her and then taking to for resale on a card with no limit nuts bro but then also too it's like can you knock him oh, absolutely not why the hell not you know no, like no, if you my can't. mom no, you if, can't knock if, him not at all if my mom yeah. worked for nike i'm, I'm and on, on top of that thing. is there anything in the nike like contract employee language that you know what I mean like uh, well so. also too before well you gotta think about it, like it's it's history now you yeah. see what I'm saying like before like society society advanced yeah. so before we they didn't have this problem they yeah. didn't have to have this uh, as a written rule mm -hmm. but best believe 20 years now down the absolutely. line that's gonna be an employee yeah, yeah, contract yeah. like absolutely. this is gonna they're gonna have these are steps that they're gonna have to take now yeah and now look at and in the business that wasn't even that wasn't even that popular wasn't mm -hmm. even in demand like that but now these are these are legitimate flips now you have people from all all across you have regular gentlemen who work uh, gentlemen and females who work regular nine to fives mm -hmm. who sit at their desk looking to purchase a pair of shoes to make a little bit extra bit of money mm -hmm. for the house Mm -hmm. and you can't knock that that's a, that's a, for people to be able to capitalize and make an income from their cell phone Come at, while at work or on the couch 
Come on. Absolutely. That's that's genius. Absolutely. I want to talk more about this, um, but I, I want to dig into, you know, your story, your history, what's led you to this moment. The off air, we talked a little bit about retail experience. So let's kind of walk through what's led you to this. Well, for the most part, I've um I've been in retail customer service for about the past 20 years. Yeah. Um, I started out as a sales associate on the floor, mm -hmm. worked my way up to key holder, to assistant manager, to eventually being a manager and, um, one of the biggest full line department stores in the country. And from doing that, you know, you, um, you just starting to see how the businesses run, how the operations, the daily, the in and outs of how things you, you learn every department mm -hmm. throughout just that time of experience that I've had. And then after you kind of learn it in and out, um, you're like, I could do this. Mm -hmm. And it's not really the fact of, oh, no, I could, um, I can open a store and I could do this, but it's more so I can open the business. I can train and coach employees all to achieve one main goal. And that's kind of how the store idea was put together mm -hmm. but also too it's we didn't really want to do sneakers yeah and then also too is with me going through all of that i really didn't want to do that again yeah so it, it kind of came to the point where you know from me just over the years acquiring a lot of things having you know just having things aside and things start taking up space me kind of being like a hoarder Mm -hmm. having to find a way to like just unload stuff mm -hmm. and then after unloading stuff seeing that i'm actually making a profit for it i'm like okay there's there's a business in this mm -hmm. maybe we can go a little bit further with this and my cousin was with me 100 percent every step of the way um more so because we now, were just at, at this point you're still working a full-time job this so point this is I'm a side hustle this point i'm still working a full-time job um i want to say i was I was the shoe department manager for Nordstrom at the time. And I'm still working the nine to five. I'm in my department. I'm getting, um, I'm getting every shoe that comes in, in the receiving. So I'm having all my guys who are in shipping and receiving anything coming that they know I want. Put call me aside. straight off the floor. Shoot me a text. <laughs> call me straight off the floor. I'm yeah. coming back there. Love it. I'm using my discount. Um, I ended up being like one of the highest sales reps for the season. So I was end up getting, um, all-star um percentages off. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting 33% off every purchase. Word. So I'm, I'm already getting shoes at a discounted rate. So now we're getting them, you know, I'm talking about it's, it's ranger, bro. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm paying like $35 for like a Kobe crazy eight Adidas crazy. still in the box. You know, I sold a pair last year. You see what I'm saying? And it was From pretty nice, years right? Ago. And it was nice. So and it's it, like, it's crazy. It's, it's sitting in my closet thing. for over 10 years. That you wouldn't even think that you know that you bypass every day. That it's just something that I, I knew to get rid of them. I just had it yet. My wife was like, yo, when you get rid of the shoe boxes, I was like, I'm working on it. Away, and, yeah. and I sold eights. I sold the, the DMP package. I sold some the white and green 14s. I sold a handful of sneakers, bro. And they made money, fam. And they've been in a closet for over 10 years. And just it's too tight for there. me. Just, just sitting there. Just sitting there. You know what I mean? And so what did I do? I bought, you know, like 10 more pairs. <laughs> Come on. But bro. it is what it is. My old sneakers paid for it. Right? And, that's, and you can't be mad at that. Yeah. And like, you can't be mad at that. And just like you said, too, with the guy ended up who sold the pair of dunks. Mm -hmm. And he added an addition onto his house. So you see what I'm saying? These are, these are certain things that you can't really, like, you can't knock anybody for that. Because they, they're using the funds to make, make more funds in absolutely. the future they're bettering absolutely. themselves absolutely and so yep. with me saying that i wanted like it's that was kind of our idea it's kind of how we put the idea together mm -hmm. to getting this started like i didn't really like after working in the store for so long the last thing i wanted to do was open the store and work mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. but also too it's like you start seeing it, it's like well i and i still do it to this day i'll go into the store and I wait to see how long it takes for an associate to engage me. Mm -hmm. That's but me everywhere I go for yeah. that. 
because I have retail experience. And you, and you know, you know mm-hmm. the things that should be done properly mm-hmm. or how you want to be treated yeah. as a customer. I have a, I have a friend, um, he, he easily has a seven figure apparel business in Atlanta. He, I'm going to end up interviewing him on the podcast, so I'll plug you then. But, um, you know, he talks about it. He's like, yo, for X amount of years, I was an employee. I was a manager. I was this, I was that. And guess what I did? I learned the systems. I learned the operations. I learned the ins and outs of the business. I learned the tricks. And then I started my own brand and I took everything that I learned in that time, creating my own systems that pay me, you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with staying in a business and learning how business operates. Yep. And, you know, innovating when you create that for your own system and your own brand. Um, so I, I love that. I love, you know, side hustles, right? So uh, there are a lot of like memes that go around where they're like, you know, if you make, I think it's like a $1,000 um, on a side hustle sale, it's like getting 100% return like in the stock market. Um, so if you can just create a little extra income, you can obviously pay down debt. You can, you know, reinvest that and, and try to double that. Um, but it gives you so much leeway, um, and just, you know, side money. Yeah. It gives you so much yourself. Place, it gives you, yeah, it gives you just options. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so, good to be choosy. It's good yeah, to have yeah. options. Man. I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There, there's a movie, uh, it was with Justin Timberlake in time. And the whole concept is like, there is no money, but there's time. It's time, buying time. And he was trying to get the time to save his mother. And there are gatekeepers in between the zones. And, and, and in my eyes, the gatekeepers, I mean, the gatekeeper for, for, in my eyes is like us being too lazy to learn and to read and to grow. And when you do all that and you start a side hustle and you start a business, you can literally change what class you're in. And like all in America, we have all that freedom. Like there are a handful of obviously uh, first time millionaires who created it on their own, who got it on their own. And, uh, you know, books and putting in the effort is is that gatekeeper. But uh, I reference that movie in my mind, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. like And not, not, a, not too many people are familiar with that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, like, it's, but time, you know, time is money. Time absolutely. is everything. And also, too, is with that time and is everything, too, is you can't, you know, it's, um, it is perfect timing. But mm-hmm. what they say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. what I feel. And like you said, too, it's opportunity. Um, I feel that's that's the problem with um, just a lot of areas in society. We have mm-hmm. a lot of people who are uneducated. Mm-hmm. So they're not really, I'm not really going to say they're not willing to take the opportunity, but they don't know the opportunity. They don't know how to recognize the opportunity when it presents itself mm-hmm. because they're uneducated. Absolutely. And... And that's, you know, that's something that, you know, unfortunately we see it mostly amongst the minority community. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's something that needs to be spread out more. I think, um, throughout schools and everything, they, um, they should teach the kids how to manage money. Yeah. They should, oh, absolutely. Teach, you know, absolutely. I think about that. And then I think about like, if I, when I was in high school, if they were talking about money management, I'd probably be interested in that. But if they if they started talking about credit and other stuff, I don't know if I would be that interested. But you know I, mean? I say that too, I, and I say that too. But also too, it's like we say, um, time ends everything. Mm-hmm. So back at back in those times when we were in school, we didn't have the same things that are presented to these children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. even with you can say, you know, we've had a lot of we've had a lot of leaps and a lot of new innovations that have appeared throughout the time. But like, mm-hmm. even so, like, like you said too, if they were teaching us about credit and money management in our time, we probably wouldn't listen to it. But now we also didn't, we had the things, but we weren't, we didn't, we didn't have podcasts at our disposal. And they weren't, that's what I'm we saying. They, we weren't as exposed to these things. So now yeah. like the kids can see like, well, most of perfect example now, like, um, this is probably one of the best things mm-hmm. I, and I've learned this shoot. So credit now we'll have, um, say there's a sneaker convention on the weekend. Mm-hmm. You'll have, you'll have some kids put together. They'll buy a table, say for a hundred dollars. They'll grab all the pairs that they have and they'll go to the convention, try to sell everything for a profit to make their money. 
All right. Now you have those kids who are smart. They put it together. But now you have the gentleman or you have the young gentleman, I should say, who was taught about credit at, a, at an early age. Mm -hmm. So now on this Thursday or let's say Wednesday, he goes to the bank and he applies for the loan. Mm -hmm. By Friday, he's approved for the 20000 or the forty five, whatever small loan he decides to take. Mm -hmm. He shows up at the convention on the weekend. Now, all these kids who paid the hundred dollars to buy these tables are out here selling all their shoes. He's going to every deal. He's going to every table offering the deal. Mm. And he's taking that whatever bank loan he got and he's buying all these shoes. Yeah. And now he's sitting on them. He's selling them. He's turning, he's turning it around. He's paying back the loan. And now he's sitting on profit. Yeah. But not everybody's introduced to certain yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, I love entrepreneurship. I, I got boys, right? And so I, we were talking off air where it's like some kids go to soccer and violin practice and basketball and this, and I'm like, our kids need to go to business classes. What is money? What is business? What is liability? What is the asset? Yeah. Um, and, and I think when more of that starts to happen, it just breeds entrepreneurship. Yeah. At worst, it teaches kids about the opportunity. At best, it, te it, it puts them a leg ahead to start their own business at, you know, 14. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm huge on that. Um, with sneakers, like you got Jordan one unions that are selling for $2,000, right? Like how, how do we get our hands on those outside of like sneaker release apps and StockX. Well, those, um, those are in situations like those, um, with collaborations like union mm -hmm. and what would be another best one I could say, um, fragment. Yep. Those with those type of collaborations, um, the foundership usually is revolves around where it was created. So those areas, wherever union was created, I, I, maybe I think it was, was Los, LA. An, uh, Los Angeles. Yep. So those mom and pop shops in the that boutiques, area, they, get dips. they will be presented with mm. the opportunity first. That's fine. Um, and, but that's great because that keeps the heritage and the culture where it needs to be. Yeah. It keeps it local. And I dope. like that. You can't, yeah. there's not, you know, it's, um, it's not too many things that keep it like that. Um, to these days and you've seen that too with like a lot of the nike dunks mm -hmm. um the chunky donkeys dude yeah they, i was gonna mention those the ben and jerry's like the ben and jerry's so those shoes went like specifically the skate shops mm -hmm. they didn't go to full line stores mm -hmm. and that's awesome dude those ben and jerry's were like three bands four awesome. bands i'm looking at this like are you kidding me but do you but like even with the shoe uh, and on my personal in my personal opinion that mm -hmm. might have been one of the best shoes that have it was dropped extremely that creative time. yeah just from yeah. everything to to the whole box mm -hmm. To the colors in the shoe, to it looking like a cow mm. with the rainbows in it, like mm. it was, it was an amazing shoe. Um, unfortunately for me, I can't really wear dunks like that. It's just mm. the way my my foot's positioned and mm. and designed and the yeah, way the shoe's designed. A, it's a particular shoe. Yeah, so it's all right. But other than that, like that's probably that's probably one of the biggest L's I took this season. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on Bapes? How are those? Bape was one of um. Bape was one of the biggest upcoming brands when we were younger. Mm -hmm. um, they were hard to get. You Absolutely. Know? Um, so a lot of people had a lot of fake Bapes back mm -hmm. then. I think... And the fakes back then were so uncomfortable, bro. It was terrible. It was terrible, but nobody cared because the whole point was that you had your Bapes on. Yeah, man. So, it you know, I feel... Um, I feel Bape doesn't get the respect that it should just... Yeah. Due to the like the bootleg, mm -hmm. all the bootleg and timing that it has, but like um, but that's a brand that you can you have to see even with all the bootleg and it still survived. Mm -hmm. So it's um, I feel like it's like even like I said too before um, history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So it's coming back full circle. It's making a return, and now like you know hype beats everything is trends and fads. Mm -hmm. So you know we get one 
Supsina Vizu jeans and Bapes making and they're coming back, back and they're coming back. Soon it's gonna be Red Monkey is, is it, is and the, the Japanese denim. Like I, I saw, I, I forget where I saw it, but someone had mentioned Iceberg, and you know I'm just back in time on Iceberg. And jeans. now listen now, but but that yeah. might not be too bad of a comeback because yeah. some of those Iceberg sweaters were real nice. You mm-hmm. get the Snoopies mm-hmm. and the Goofies and the mm-hmm. Donald Ducks. So that mm-hmm. one, um, you seen Coogee making a comeback mm-hmm. here and there. It's um. More so too that I say it's um it's areas. Yeah. It's where you are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because jerseys have made a comeback. Yeah. Like I found I feel my like jerseys never left them. It really hasn't, but to but it wasn't as dominant as it was with the sizing of the jerseys has changed. Yeah. So before you and everybody's not big. wearing the forex yeah, and now the it's, now it's, now it's size. fitted, you yep. know, or it's a yep. little bit smaller. So um yep. Yeah, I you know I don't I don't really mind that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm you it's know. a summer thing. I mean, I'm in, I'm in a tank top anyway. So yeah, no, just give me. It. Like I last year, I picked up the uh, what was it the baby blue and, and blue Kobe. You know what I mean? Yeah. The retro. Um, summertime. You know. Um, what's one of your favorite books? <sighs> one of them actually is so funny. I was talking to my cousin today. Um, one of my favorite books is not really um I don't really even call it a book. It's sort of like my Bible. Um, mm. I kind of resort to it um when I find myself, and like I'm not gonna say a dark place, but when I find myself kind of just like stuck or I just have to reflect on certain things, mm. is some um, the Forty Eight Laws of Power, right. and that's just because um the examples that the book gives you. It gives you three examples of what of a law of what of a topic, and that um in that chapter that you're reading and i like that because you know um there's you know two plus two is not the only way to make four Mm -hmm. and when people understand that there's different there's different ways to reach a goal or you know find reasoning in certain things i feel um it brings a lot more peace to situations and um, also just even through reflection, it gives you an idea of where you're headed or where you might be or some of the mistakes you might be on the path of making. And it help you more so get back on the right track. So the 48 Laws of Power is one of my, was always been one of my go-to books. Um, one of my favorite laws in that book is um, Never Outshine the Master. Mm. And... For that reason, you know, you can kind of take the perception however you want to do. But I, um, for me being a person who's always, um, more so always in my job, knowing that I'm in a position that I was never meant to really be stuck in and Mm -hmm. that I knew I was always going to, um, eventually end up moving up Mm -hmm. or progressing, you, um, you never want to like outshine or step on anybody's toes, especially mm-hmm. like an, an admin on the third authority figure who's there, like more so in control of trying to help you. There, there's a, a story in um, how to win friends and influence people that Carnegie tells. And he's like, you know, we're at a banquet and it's at a friend's, you know, mansion residence. And he's saying he's recalling a story and he's saying it's from the Bible or a certain book. And he's asking me to agree with him. And I have two choices. I can disagree with him and shame him in front of all of his friends and family. Or I can agree with him, save face, and still be one of his favorite people. Right? The first, the former, uh, isn't going to do me anything but cause me harm in every way. Uh, The latter brings me, you know, peace. And and so, hand in hand with that. Yeah, pick and choose your battles wisely, you know. Yeah, man. And that's, and, but that's something, you know, um, if you would have asked me this question, I'm, I would say 10, but even maybe five years ago, mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't get that answer from me. Absolutely. Because, you know, it takes growth. It takes, you know, it takes time for you to really start analyzing things and start appreciating things for what they really are, you know? Yeah. Tell me, uh, it, so in the shop, I guess, how many pairs do you guys think you sell on average a day and how many do you keep in inventory? I see posts literally like every other day and it's like yeah, 20 it's, um, pairs, all, all different brands, styles, colors. It's tough. Um, I can have, it's, um, well, that's one thing I can say about being in a sneaker retail show, store. It's not your regular, um, retail day. Yeah, yeah. So basically you say, if we're at a Best Buy on a Monday morning, the store opens at 10 mm-hmm. by 10, 15, you probably got a woman coming in making a return or something. Mm. 
Um, Sounds yeah. like normal retail. Yeah, here we're not really having that issue. Yeah. Um, 12 o'clock, we open our doors. 12.05, we can have somebody walking in with 20 pairs ready to unload and ready to cash, be cashed out. Mm. And that's and kind you, of... And by that, you mean selling? Yeah, but selling, um, looking to more so just, you know, collect some funds. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, we buy, sell, and trade shoes. Um, so rarely so you figure on a monday morning we can have somebody come in with 20. Mm. um if they're all dead stock basically on one we're gonna repost those back up yeah those um it all depends on what shoe it is say if it's a jordan one or mm -hmm. a yeezy they're probably gonna move that day yeah especially um i see thing, the post and I, sometimes i'd be tempted to come in but i'm like I don't, I don't need to and the it. thing that really um the red, the thing that really controls that factor is mm. the size. Yeah, the size is whether. What's the most common size? Nine and a half, nine. Well, right now the um the most common is the the I'm I'm sorry guys, but the the females yeah they're, they're coming with it. The females are so, turning into the sneakerheads. So like five and a half to like a men's seven. I I think I I I think I bought the wife a pair of Yeezys. I think they were like too tight, and I listed them, and they sold immediately on eBay. Yeah. They move um, because I was so surprised. Yeah. I thought they'd take forever. It was like because the smaller easily. sizes are harder to come by. Mm. Um, general size, size nine and a half to eleven. Um, you know, ten, ten and a half. Those Gone. are the go tos. Those are the yeah. go tos always. But it, you know, it's and like I said, even too for us being a small local local shop, you would. You wouldn't really expect for us to be moving the volume that we do. Mm -hmm. But like I said, technology, man, mm -hmm. technology. Just the social media. I, I follow the Instagram and I, I see a ton of new pairs coming in all the time. All, all the, the time. time. So I'm like, these guys have to be daily getting through a lot of these. Daily. So I guess on an average week, how many pairs do you think you sell? We can... um. <laughs> Average wise, like from Monday through, let's say Monday through, actually we'll start, so we'll say Sunday to Saturday. It could be any average 55 to 75 pairs. I figured around 50. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because it's also too, it's like, um, it's it's a lot to the point where I really can't get into the inventory, oh, into yeah, the yeah. system. Like, yeah. So we end up, that's what Ooh. happens a lot. We end up having to take... Um, at the time that we should be like resting mm -hmm. or you know doing other things with our family we're taking that time to like restock the in inventory we're rewrapping shoes yep. or we're going out to purchase items gotcha yeah um i guess what are your favorite sneakers i have um currently i have a few um my current my current favorite sneakers um i'm i'm big of a play edition mm -hmm. retro um type guy yeah so um once the gris the griffey's re-released i was all over it yeah bro yeah the griffey's re-released nice. i was all on for that um play edition shoe wise with me um one of my favorite shoes that have been out for a while has been the Kyrie basketball shoe mm -hmm. um I'm not too big on his last numbers. Yeah. Um, the Kyrie one, the Kyrie one was one of my favorite shoes. The um, the Kyrie twos, that was one some of my favorite shoes. I had the confettis in those. I had the slimes. I had the Halloweens. Um, it's just a real good shoe. It's comfortable. It has great gripping. Um, the colorways are good. It's a nice summer shoe too. It's mm -hmm. light. You can um throw with a lot of different um. Aesthetics outfits, with yeah. your outfits and stuff. Another one, a Jordan one is a great shoe. It always goes with it. Um it's just the way um just the way I feel like it's formed and it's built. It's kind of a flat shoe, so it kinda of hurts my feet. Um Jordan fives uh be my um my next go to. Nice. The Jordan six is my favorite shoe though. Yeah. Yeah, the Jordan six. Um the Gatorade Green is my favorite colorway yeah. in the Jordan there Six. That's um yeah, if I had to choose, I'm definitely gonna go. I'm gonna go sixes, fives, Kyrie's. It's really easy to get lost in, uh, you know, continuing to order and order and order. I'm trying to limit to myself to a certain amount of pairs. Not that I have that many, but I'm like, all right, if I want to take on more, I have to unload some. Um, because outside of that, it's like I don't want to hold this much cash in sneakers. 
Uh, although, I mean, I held sneakers for over 10 years and I still sold. Uh, with inflation, I don't know, but it's still close, right? So There's on some, some I totally shoes, made money. Yeah. Others, I, I made back 80, 90% holding yeah. for 10 years. Like, I'll, I'll still take that. Some yeah. of them are like fine wine. Yeah. So, you Absolutely. know, as it ages, Absolutely. you're going to get a higher price I for see, it. I see Jordan 1s originally released in the 80s, like the original sneakers. People are trying to sell those for like 10 bands. Oh, yeah. That's insane. There's one, I know one pair, Um, I want to say one pair sold for like 23 grand. Crazy. For a pair of shoes from like 1983. That's crazy. And then, at, like, as I mentioned, my boy sent out his dunks to be restored because you got these dudes who restore sneakers and they're literally like sneaker surgeons. Right, you watch their YouTube tutorials. They go through everything. They're introducing new stitching. They're introducing new, I don't know, leather. Like, there's all kinds of stuff that they can do, and it's, it's insane. You, you once they're done, you get them, and you're like, there's no way these are thirty yeah, years old. Yeah, this is even the same shoe. Even when, like you said, when you it's watch a, the process of it, yeah. even how they, um, like how they even have to deconstruct the shoe. Yeah, just the like the steps in the processes that they take, just yeah. just to make sure the, the shoe stays safe, secure, so they can get it back to restore it to the you know the way the model the way the model should look it's it's yeah, amazing it's, man. It's, it's incredible um so seeing those are always nuts these dudes would take literally mud filled sneakers and restore them for 100 200 bucks and then increase the resale value like 500 a thousand dollars depending of on the new sneaker. shoe that was basically about to get tossed Destroyed. in the dumpster literally literally so yeah, the sneaker market is crazy. Um, what's your take, I guess, on stock market, Bitcoin, other... Like, w would you hold a lot of money in sneakers? Would you hold more money in the stock market, Bitcoin, real estate? What's your take? Well, in that option, um, well, if I, if, I had to, if I had to choose but all between all of them, definitely I'll leave it in real estate. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely going to see it fast in real estate. Um, I'm, with me, though, like, um, I'm not... I'm a risk taker. I'm not yeah. really a gambler, but crypto's the future. You know yeah. what I mean? Crypto's the future. Yes, we can wake up one morning and we could lose it all in crypto. Mm -hmm. um, so real estate and sneakers is really the safest. But mm -hmm. like even with sneakers too, like um, you know, like you kind of like like you said, you got lucky holding them for the ten years because sneakers, like you know, they devalue too. They lose. Like they start. They start crumbling. They start yellowing. They the paint Oxidizing. starts to crack. I got some aquas you know? where the the paint is cracked, and I'm like, do I send these out to get restored, or do I just yeah. sell them? And that's the thing too. Like you know, that's and that's a risk that you take. It, like I guess that it is with everything. You know, there's a heard, risk. No yeah. risk, no reward. I heard uh, Fat Joe pulled out a pair of I forget which sneakers, and like his first time wearing them. But they've been sitting in a box for like ten years, and they just like ripped right apart. And this is, yeah. I ended up getting them. Um, I had a pair of um low um low women's playoff eights. Mm. I want to say they're from 2012. I I wore them one day. It was cool. Next day, I walked outside, I lifted my foot, boom, and the bottom of my foot was still <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. it's you know over time. So like um. Should I have sold them? Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know what it is too? I actually found them. I mm. paid, I want to say I found them on OfferUp. I paid $45 for them. You know, you're in the money guy, at that point. You know? You're in the money at that point. So, but now, you know, they're, they're just a part in my box. Mm. So like, so I'm not going to toss them. I'll yeah. save them, let them get restored. Then we can mm. try the process again. Yep. So that's the thing. Like, you know, it's kind of, um, with sneakers and, and real estate, you can rehab things absolutely, and then bring them back to life yeah. and make your profit. Um, same thing with the stock market too, you know, um, it, it's just, you have a little bit more of a risk, um, unless you get an F, unless you buy low. So right. like, you know, we have a lot of, um, there's a lot of people crying right now. Mm -hmm. Doja 17 cents. Mm -hmm. They look back to when it was 73 cents mm -hmm. and they're like, I should have sold. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But then you also had the other people too. Like, bro, I don't really care. I bought the shit at nine cents. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, I tell people all the time. We have a Bitcoin podcast, and it's like, yeah, you're down fifty percent, but you're really not down. Like your loss isn't realized until you hit sell, right? So in two thousand eight, when the real estate market crashed and people bought their four hundred thousand dollar houses, and they woke up and realized their house was would appraise currently at two twenty five. 
Do you think they said, oh my God, I've lost $175,000. Let me sell this house and move into an apartment. No, they said, I'm going to stay in this house for the next 10 years. And as you know, the real estate market is yeah. insane right now. I get it in right that $400,000 house that was valued at 225 back in 2009 is now sitting at $575,000. Yeah, it's They're about up. to take that 200 on top. And so there's this power in just sitting on your hands. Don't sell your assets at a loss like that unless you absolutely need the capital. Um, but that, that's what I continue to tell people um, outside of like whatever you're investing in, be educated on it, right? Like with Bitcoin, my conviction is beyond price, right? The price doesn't matter because the price of money is actually trash, right? Real estate market is up 20% in two years. That's insane. You, people, you can, you can take a three-year-old car right now and sell it and have equity in it because used car prices are uh, insane, right? So right now. to measure Bitcoin in the price of USD doesn't even make sense. Um, we have, you know, not to go on a Bitcoin tear, but we have South America accepting, right now it's El Salvador, soon it'll be South America and a lot of other places, but they're accepting it as legal tender. So what that means is like, and I'm thinking about this with the sneaker shop, right? You, know, yeah. you, can, you can go to a pupusa spot in El Salvador, right? she's going to give you a QR code to scan. You're going to pull out the strike app that connects to your bank, like Venmo. You're going to hit pay. It's going to scan that QR code. Strike is going to debit USD from your bank account, 10 bucks, and she's going to get it immediately because it's going to go through lightning network, which is at the snap of your finger. Um, she's going to get it in Bitcoin. She can then hold it in Bitcoin or she can transfer it to USD. Uh, traditionally, uh, uh, you know, a restaurant or whatever in America, if, if that's paid, you still have to wait two or three days for the transaction to clear. But with the Lightning Network and Bitcoin Network, it's at a snap of a finger. So you can then take that money from that day and buy more sneakers, right? So you could you could create Lightning codes and get paid immediately, you know, for the shop. Um, and it's just you know a whole nother way of doing things. And then like paying my national grid bill, I'm using Strike to a uh, moon uh, Chrome browser okay, and I'm getting 5% back. So it's cause you're using it. Moon creates a visa gift card for you on the fly. Strike debits it from your bank account. So you could tell people, Hey, if you want 5% off on sneakers, use a strike app with moon browser and you'll get instantly 5% back. Look at that. See? And so like technology, just making things insane. Advancements. Yeah, man. man. So it's, uh, it's cool to see, um, let people know where I guess they can find you on social and yeah. uh, website, et cetera. For the most part, we are on, you can follow Scoop Drip at Facebook on Scoop Drip. You can follow us on Instagram at Scoop Drip. We also have a website. It is www.scoopdrip.com. You can follow me on IG at Vente Weeks. And that's also at Facebook at Vente Weeks. So that's V E I N T E I N T E Weeks, W E E K S. Great, bro. It's been uh, awesome to catch up with you. Thanks so much for your time. And uh, looking forward to talking with you soon. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate you.